That takes me to nation building. Nation, nation building, the idea of nations, is a very, very recent phenomenon. If you look at the whole of human history, the invention of a nation uh, uh, is very, uh, very, very relatively new. And in, in the creation of nation, there have been some major dynamics about how you deal with uh, the difference that has come as a consequence of human mobility and human uh, creativity. One response has been to say, well, societies don't work uh, unless we're the same. And we need to make sure, uh, if we're going to be a good, strong, healthy society, uh, that those perhaps who were there before us uh, um, that don't fit in, that might never fit in, need to be removed, and we need to construct a community uh, of our own people. In fact, if you look at the example of Australia, when, when the first settlers came there from uh, Great Britain, um, they looked at the peoples who were there and barely saw them as human. In fact, what they declared was that the land was empty, terra nullius, it was declared. And then on becoming a nation, they declared themselves white and British, and their job, they thought, was to smooth the dying pillow of the indigenous people. Because in their minds, with the, with the ideology of racism, uh, they believed that the indigenous Australians, the Aboriginal people of Australia, could never become part of the Western civilization that they brought with them from England uh, and, the, and Great Britain to Australia. As, but this kind of exclusion and separation was not unique to Australia. Other nations, when they created themselves, created themselves with a singular sense and drew borders and tried to remove people or had wars to, to kill people who they thought were not like them because they believed that you couldn't live together fairly and because they believed in race having superior and inferior members to it. So that's one uh, dynamic that exists in the world and has existed and and is still in the, in the memory of, of people who are part of uh, our planet today. A second um, uh, dynamic is something that we call recognition or integration, and uh, many parts of the world have finally had to realise that you cannot do ethnic cleansing, you cannot remove people who are not like you, even if you are dominant, even if you have the tools to be able to make it impossible for people that you don't like to survive comfortably, you do need to create the conditions of recognising diversity and respecting people in their differences. Uh, sometimes it's been called multiculturalism, sometimes it's been called uh, uh, assimilation, but that has been a, a, a trend as well. And the third one, uh, perhaps a more recent one that we'd like to uh, talk about is civic pluralism. How does any geographic space recognise the dignity of the people uh, who are in that space and how does it create institutions that are inclusive and can deliver on people's needs, whether they are emotional, uh, material or symbolic. So if we just take exclusion and separation, um, it is one of the most uh, difficult and uh, horrendous periods in human history in nation building. Um, and many places in the world have chosen that as a model uh, for community building um, in order to uh, ensure that the resources that were available to the land were to their people and enable their people to prosper and grow. Uh, examples have existed, uh, as I've already mentioned, in Australia, in the United States, apartheid in South America, the fascist, fascism of, of of Germany that wanted to get rid of uh, Jews and gypsies and people that were Aryan, um, uh, the totalitarianism of the Soviet Union. We have seen uh, many periods in history where people have resorted to that kind of dynamic for addressing uh, diversity. The other approach which, uh, which I uh, mentioned earlier is the one about creating a nation around a single identity. And anyone who's allowed in must assimilate. 
So if you're going to be Italian, you have to be Italian in a particular kind of way. Um, you, you have to be of the, the same religion or of the same habits or of, you know, the, the idea of, of, of uh, it, it, if you are to come into the community and want to be part of the Italian state, for example, you need to assimilate to what that country uh, has determined are the features of its society. Uh, assimilation in uh, was also uh, a model in the American context. The idea was that people would come from all over the world, as we've seen, uh, but once they came into America, they'd leave their identity behind and they would go into a big melting pot and come out with new habits, new language, new ways of behaving, and then they would have the opportunity to share it in, in the bounty of the land. Uh, the assimilation policy was, uh, when there is an assimilation policy, the schools are part of that process and uh, there's great attempts to ensure uh, that the heritage that somebody had when they came to the country, or in the case of Native Americans or Aboriginal people, that somehow that is put aside in order to become part of the society that's going to succeed. Part of the idea around assimilation was that if you wanted to get ahead in life, you needed to be like the dominant group. Uh, so on, the, on one side there was uh, an ideology that it would benefit uh, people to leave behind their, the ways that were deemed inferior or not suitable. But it was a horrendous process for people to have to give up so much in order to become, and as we've seen, uh, it's not necessar necessary to give up everything to become part of a decent society and to make a contribution to it.